right, hey everybody. For today's lecture, we're basically going to go over some of the basic things of the cameras. This is more of a hands-on, technical type of thing, but uh, this is this is what we'll do for today so that you know what you need to do for the assignments coming up. we got to cover this sometime. seems like the best time. I'll also drop some tidbits about how to have good, clean audio and why it's so important, and we'll talk about that as we do these assignments. But for today, I want to show you the camera, how it works, and how we're going to use it, especially for this first assignment. We'll get into more depth in some of the manual features down the road. Today is very basic. We're talking about audio. There are two main kinds of sound that we'll be focusing on for this assignment and for the rest of our assignments down the road. The first one is called nat sound. The second one is called primary sound. Nat sound is very simply natural sound. Sound that just happens. It exists naturally. If I shoot an interview outside, my natural sound will be maybe sounds of you know outside, you know, city sounds, uh, people in the park, maybe a fountain nearby. So natural sound happens naturally. If I'm in a bowling alley, what's the gnat sound? Cracking of pins, people talking, shoes shuffling on the boards. That's gnat sound. It's not something that I'm aiming for directly, but it is just happening naturally. It's the ambience of the place. They also have something called room sound, so that if you're recording scenes or dialogue for a movie in a room, you'll usually have everybody be quiet for a while and you record just plain room sound, and it's that low hiss kind of just echoey nothingness that fills in the gaps and you'll find out what we what we're talking about there a little bit later on for this first assignment we're going to be collecting three to four different nat sounds okay things that happen naturally I'll walk you through that and how to get it off the camera and we'll talk about that uh, we probably already talked about that in class and for the second type of sound that we're going to focus on it's called primary sound primary sound is interview sound or actual speaking or, or talking. It's the main content that we want people to hear. If they don't hear the net sound, it's not going to affect much of, of the message. Primary sound missing will affect the message. So I'm going to show you how to get the primary sound and that sound on this camera and uh, that will be the basics of the camera. So first off, turn it around this way. Canon HFS30, you don't need to know that, but it's a nice little camera. Make sure that when you're shooting that your your uh, switch right here above the handle is set to M. If it's on green, it shoots in auto, and it actually won't let you do a lot of things that I'm going to tell you you need to do. So make sure that is switched over to M for manual. And as I flip this back around, you'll see that it says no memory card, so we'll need to fix that. And I'm going to show you a couple of those basics before we even get into the audio because you need to know them. So come in really close. Okay, it's a touch screen. That's nice. So to get around in this place, you have a touch screen, and the things that you need to pay attention to are the battery up here. Mine says 145 minutes. It's a good amount of battery. I'm going to be able to do what I need to do on that. I would just, for safety sakes, for any battery use on any camera, drop 20 minutes. If it says 145, you probably only have 120. Honestly, just the way it works. So battery length, and then you'll notice right underneath a big red A with a slash through it. That means that it's set up to record in slot A, but there's nothing in slot A. So observe. I have my SD card. It is the class 6 or higher. It's a class 6. I slide it right inside. Notice. There's an A slot and a B slot. Since it's an A with a slash on, on the screen, I'm going to put this in A. Pop it in. Just a little bit of a spring there. Whoop, pop it in and slide the door closed. Again, you've got to put the card in and slide the door closed for it to recognize the card. If you leave that door open, it will yell at you and it'll still say, notice, no card in A. Big red. Red means can't do anything. That red does. Close that door, watch it, calculates for a minute and it says, ah, that card, which is now a green A, has 2 hours and 28 minutes on it. Easy. Now I know how much I can shoot on this card. So this other stuff we'll cover later. The main thing that I want to show you is how to switch the card. If the camera that you check out is not set to shoot on a card, you're going to have a hard time keeping track of your stuff. So here's how you manage where the camera records to. Function brings up a little menu here. We'll get through some of these settings in a minute. Right now you're going to go into menu, and it gives you three tabs across the top. Main one we're going to focus on here is the middle one for this. So I tap the middle one. So I'm going to go down to the one that says Record Media for Movies. And then it has a button on this side that I can tap. Notice here that I have three choices. 
internal, which looks like a little microchip right there, A and B. Okay? If I tap B, it'll think for a minute and it will give me nothing, right? It's not showing any hours or any minutes because there is no card in B. If I'm on internal, it tells me how much I can record, which looks like I've got almost six hours available on internal. That means on a chip inside of here, which means that if I shoot my assignment on here and I have Atlas the camera, as soon as I turn Atlas back in, I don't have those clips anymore. If I need to work on them for homework, if I'm bringing them to class to work on, they'll be stuck on here and you will be sad. So don't shoot on the internal drive. In a pinch you can, but you've got to get it off before you give it back, so don't do it. Get your card and use A. Usually A is the safest one. If we all use A every time you check out a camera, there's a better chance that it'll be on A and you won't have to freak out because you can't record to something. So stick it on A. You can hit the return button to check out some of the other settings. We don't really need to mess with anything else right now. We just want it to be set. And X gets us back here. So things to check. Battery, where is it recording? And make sure it's on your card and not internal. And then I'll show you sound levels right here. Notice that my sound levels are not bouncing at all. I'm talking right next to the camera and you should see some sort of bouncing. Observe. Ah, there we go. Do you see some levels bouncing now? The reason why that happened is because the main thing that we're going to talk about, and that is how to record NAT sound versus primary sound. Underneath the cameras, we have mounted on most of them a Beach Tech box. This Beach Tech box takes in really nice XLR audio and spits it out here, and we take this signal and we put it in to the camera. Okay, so this is primary. This has to be put together. I'm going to walk you through that in a minute, but I want to show you that without this plugged in, these two are just connected with a screw, right? This just hangs here and it's done. What I'm doing is telling the camera that there's nothing plugged into the mic hole. You see this red one right here? There's the mic hole. I'm not putting anything in it. If I'm not putting anything in it, I'm expecting the camera to pick up its own audio with what are called onboard mics. If you have a microphone on your camera, we call it an onboard mic, and usually it's the best one to pick up that sound. Here, we call these kind of microphone ears. There's one on each side of this camera. See if it shows up in the light there. There you go. Boom. So, this was actually, we can do a little bit of stereo, although it's funky stereo. There's some on that side. And there's another one on this side, right? Whoop, right here. Okay? So, that'll pick up your NAT sound. So, when I give the assignment to pick three or four NAT sounds, you're going to make sure that this and nothing else, this or anything else, is plugged into this one. This hole has to be empty. Empty. I'm going to say it again. This hole has to be empty to get NAT sounds. I've seen too many people go and shoot their assignments and have these connected and come back and say, Oh, I didn't get any audio. Nothing happened. I have my clips, but there, there's nothing in there audio-wise. Notice that there's no audio bouncing on that meter. Do you know what else is really good? When you shoot anything in audio, use your headphones. Because I'm pretty sure that somebody's going to come complaining to me that they shot it and they saw the meters bouncing and it was supposed to be working. But then I'll say, were you wearing headphones? And I'll say, I didn't bring them with me. I didn't want to walk back to my car to get them. Well, sorry then. You weren't able to check. That's one of the things that you've got to really check. Wear your headphones when you shoot audio. Put them in. They plug in right here. There's a little symbol that says, Ooh, there it is. I don't have to see the symbol, but there's a little headphone symbol of those holes. It only fits in one. It's the middle one right there. That's where you want to plug in your headphones and listen. Right now, you would hear nothing because there's no meters bouncing. Why is it? Why is nothing bouncing? Back here, this is in the way, right? The camera is expecting another signal to come through this cable, and this cable isn't getting any other signal because there's nothing coming in on this side. These are the inputs, and they're empty. Okay. Quick recap on auto, or on NAT sound, ambient sound. Very quick. If nothing is in this hole, you got NAT sound. Observe. Leaving it out, turn it around, there. If I let this record right now on my card, you would be able to hear the room sound or the nothingness, right? Or you'd be able to hear the loud people talking in the room outside. That's NAT sound. Now, quickly on to primary sound before this gets way too long. Primary sound means I want, to t I want to hear something crisp and clean from somebody's voice. It's, that's what I expect, right? I, I, I'm not just hoping that it's pretty sound from the, from the natural world. I want somebody to talk to me. So to assemble that, I need to have a microphone plugged into these. These inputs need to be activated or hot. Here we go. 
Every bag and every camera has an XLR cord. This is an XLR cord. These are professional level audio with balanced stereo signals, not something we need to worry about today. You should find them in your bag coiled up so very nicely and pretty, pretty that you might even you know, feel bad uncoiling them. We might spend some time in class learning how to coil cords because it's actually, for as laid back as I am, this is one of my biggest pet peeves is when people can't coil an XLR cable. Weird, huh? So, XLR cable, usually long enough to do a quick man on the street type of interview. And all you do is take the end with the plugs. We call this the male. The male end goes into the female plug here until it clicks. Now it can't come out until I push the little button that says push. So if I reach, hold it in, disconnect. So again, this one is male XLR into beach tech box. That's part of it. We're not done yet. Doesn't matter if you go here or here. Doesn't matter. We're going to record all these things in, in mono, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Now, I take the other end and uh, mic check, mic check, test, test, test. Doesn't do any good. I've got to have this connected to a mic. Every bag also has a stick mic. Connect those two till they click. They're stuck nice and tight together. I buy these because they're pretty robust, but please don't drop them. They're still pretty expensive, 100 plus dollars each. They make really good sound, but they're also really, they're really tough. So I get them because they're robust, but I don't want you to break them. Be nice. Once this is connected, notice that I have microphone to connect, you know, to grab my sound. Ah la 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 la. Down the XLR, all the way down up into the beach tech box. Almost there, not quite. What's missing? If you are observing what we're doing, you're going to remember that the output of the beach tech box, which is this fancy little nubbin right here, is not connected because we were talking about NAT sound earlier. To finish this cycle, this sequence of audio channels, we've got to take this cord and input it into that mic hole. So I'm going to show you. Mic hole, the one that's left open if you're recording that sound, and connected if you're recording primary sound. Now, you'll be able to see, I'll flip it around so you can see, that this mic is now controlling the levels that you see here. Observe, I'm going to set this one down. And I'm going to rub or, or kind of touch lightly. This is how I test. These are, these are the side mics, right? So I can kind of rub these lightly. And if, as I do that, notice that no, it's not bouncing. Okay? I can do the same thing over here. And of course, be gentle. You don't want to smack these things. There are pieces inside, but you can also just talk into it and notice that, yes, my, my levels, my meters are bouncing. So now I know that this one is giving the sound all the way up into the camera. I know that that cycle is complete from mic to cable to box to camera. What I don't know is how it sounds, and that's going to be important. That's why we put our headphones in right there, listen to it so that we also hear good sound. Sometimes it's hard to put your headphones on and get a sound check of your own voice because you hear your own self in your own ears, in your own head, and then in the hear headphones, not the best way. So if you can, hand it to somebody and say, hey, give me a mic check real quick. Just hold this right here and say, Mary had a little lamb, fleece was white as snow. Hand it off. That way you can focus and listen to the quality of that sound. So that is your primary sound. Now, final things, let's see, what do I have for final things? For any of these clips that we'll be doing, go button is back here. Okay, we're not going to worry about pictures, but right on top you have a zoom, tight and wide. Let's see if I can kick that down enough to show you, maybe, barely, not quite. We're not going to worry about that much right now. Even when we shoot things, we won't be worrying about what it, uh, where we're shooting. We're looking, we're looking at almost completely audio for this first assignment. Um, let's see what else can I tell you about it. So, go button. If I want to record a man on the street interview for like we will do for some of our sounds. I will stand over by somebody. I'll say, hey, can I ask you a quick question about Superman or Batman? And they'll say, sure. I'll hit record. Notice that it pops up a record dot right here. A record dot, it's red, but it's not a bad red. It's like a, hey, this is hot and ready red. Watch what happens when I hit stop. Now I'm going to stop it. Turns into a green with a pause kind of signal. It's like green pause. Green does not mean go in that instance. This one, it actually means not recording. I'm not doing anything. If I hit go again, it turns red. Notice that it'll actually start counting up. Oh, here. 
Nope, here. <laughs> Back. You'll see that it starts counting up how many seconds it is actually recording. So now it's recording and I know that's ready to go. So I'm set up. Again, don't have to frame up interviews on this one. This camera could be pointing totally the wrong way. I'm going to hold my microphone in front of somebody and ask them a question about Batman and Superman, and I'm going to say, record. Which one do you prefer, Batman or Superman? And they're going to hold the mic, and or you can hold the mic for them, and they'll answer, I really like Batman because... Batman? I really like Batman because he's Batman. I'm Batman. Right? So that's easy and done, and I hit stop. And I've got one clip. Nat sound, remember what we do for Nat sound? So that's easy. You do three or four of those and we'll stream them together in class. For Nat sound, remember, bring it all the way around here. This has to come out. As soon as that comes out, this mic is null and void, right? I could yell on this thing from a mile away and, oops, by the way, I want to show you the screen. Right now, you're going to see meters bouncing because I'm getting picked up by this microphone. I can put this way over here. Hardly anything is happening. As soon as I unplug this little cable, everything goes in through these NAT mics. So, I hope you don't have very many questions, but that's the essentials of the beauty of the HFS-30. It's very simple. Two kinds of audio, primary and NAT sound. This is what we use for primary. And you'll be doing interviews and other things with these later on. And these are what you use for your natural sound. Okay, last thing, if you think you want to listen back or, or watch something that you've recorded, here's how you flip into playback mode. Here on the side of the camera, we have a button that says, actually it doesn't say anything, it has a picture of a camera and then a, a kind of a play signal and two cross arrows that go this way. So I'm going to hit that bottom button right there. So there's, there's two on the top here and I'm going to hit the, the bottom one and watch what it does. Change to be back to kind of a playback mode. Again, touch screen so I can kind of scroll through things. Except for I didn't scroll. I can scroll through things and I can pick one by tapping it and it'll start to play back for me. And if I have my headphones in, I can listen to it. And if I tap it once, it brings up the controls for stepping to the, to the next clip or doing those other things. So that's how I get things to play back if I want to know, okay, did my sound record? Can I hear it? All that kind of stuff. And when I'm done, I just pop that card out and bring it to class. That's what goes in the computer and we'll suck off all of the clips. We'll be shooting some of these in class so that part we'll all do together but I want to make sure you have some basics on how to use this to gather audio and as far as I know I've covered that. So that's it for recording audio with this camera. Come ready on your first day of class next week to get out there and record some stuff right away. Rock on one and all.